in the workshop, a Marquee traction engine. This is part one, the unboxing video, and a general assessment of the mechanical condition of the engine before starting the repair and modification job. I'm being sensible on this job, I didn't use my Danish war axe to open the box because I didn't want to damage what was inside, but I didn't need to worry because inside the cardboard box, surrounded by foam, was another box, and this is a wooden box as you can see. Inside, more foam packing, and what have we got here? The label on the wooden box said that this was a maxi track traction engine, but it's not. This is a Marky traction engine. And I've only ever seen photographs of these engines. I've never seen one in the flesh, so to speak. So what's it like? Well, it's very simple. It has a steering wheel with steering chains, and it has a water gauge and pressure gauge on the back head. Sitting on top of the boiler is a double acting slide valve steam engine. And a double acting steam engine is where the steam is admitted and exhausted from both ends of the cylinder alternately. And this engine even has slip eccentric valve gear. I'll try and explain how the slip eccentric valve gear works. Normally the eccentric strap that drives the valve is driven from an eccentric sheave that's mounted on the crankshaft. And this eccentric sheave is set in a position so that it opens and closes the slide valve to admit and exhaust the steam to the cylinder at the right time. With slip eccentric valve gear though, the eccentric sheave is not fastened to the crankshaft. It can rotate and it has a peg in it which allows the eccentric sheave to be moved by this special fitting on the crankshaft. So if you want the engine to go forward, you rotate the engine in a forward direction, then open the regulator. If you want it to go backwards, you close the steam regulator and rotate the flywheel in the opposite direction. Then when you open the steam regulator again, the engine runs in reverse. Very simple, but a bit clever at the same time. Just like a girlfriend I used to have. The wheels wobble about a bit, so I don't know what this is, whether it's wear in the bearings, which is unlikely. And with no less than two girlfriend jokes in this episode, I think this has a screw loose. I'll remove the wheels and have a look at this problem in due course. Before the owner sent me this engine to repair and modify, he did mention that it needed some TLC. I was surprised to find that it has a working brake. And like the full size, it uses brake shoes on the inside of a drum mounted to the axle. A nice touch for such a small engine. I think it's time to get some compressed air into this engine and see how it runs. I'm going to feed the compressed air in via the displacement lubricator, so it will go direct to the cylinder. Some of the air will also go to the boiler, so I'll be able to see what the working pressure is like and test the safety valve, etc. With about 40 pounds per square inch of compressed air being fed to the engine, it just does not want to go. And it doesn't matter whether I rotate the flywheel clockwise or anti-clockwise, it just will not start. As you can see in this clip, even if I open the regulator fully, the engine still doesn't want to go. So I wonder what the problem could be. It looks like the valve timing's out, so I'll put this right first. All I need to do is move the slip eccentric quadrant into the correct position to operate the valves. So after a bit of adjustment, I'll try it again. And now it appears that the engine is running. When I say running, it's sort of running. It's not quite right yet. So I have a good mess about with it to find the best position possible so that the engine runs really well in forward. If it runs a bit lumpily in reverse, I'm not too worried about that because most of the time this engine will be going in a forward direction. That's not bad, but I think I can get it a little bit better than this. This job is trial and error. It's difficult to see the exact position of the eccentric because it's not fixed to the crankshaft. But after a few attempts, I get it in a good position. It's very easy to get obsessive with this, and you can get somewhere near, but generally speaking, it will never be perfect in both directions. This is in reverse, and that will be fine, I think. At this stage, I thought, I'll give the engine a run along the bench. I tried it in both directions, and it seems to run quite well. But unfortunately, my brain has now gone into obsess mode and I want to get it just right. One final adjustment should do it. It was worth all the effort. This video is edited, but the adjustment took longer than I thought it was going to do. And now it runs very smoothly in both directions. I'm quite happy with that. I think the engine's running very sweetly now. This is the guard over the drive gears, and as you can see, it's been damaged by heat. This engine is fired by using methylated spirits, and one day the owner was saying he ran it on a windy day, and the flames were everywhere, and they engulfed the engine in this area. 
So I'm going to fit a gas firing system. And I think I'll fit a small gas tank, because when I try a larger one, it doesn't look right. When it fills the entire bunker, well, it's just too invasive. These are a couple of my gas tanks. I will, of course, be buying a new one. And that's about it for this episode. I will leave you with some shots of this pretty little traction engine running on compressed air on the bench. But before I leave it running, I think it's time for some oil. You can never have too much oil on the moving parts of a model steam engine. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. <laughs>